Before you is our hand-drawn Ligny 1815 map. This map is used on our tabletop games to reflect the movements of the units or the divisions, brigades, etc. as they come towards the tabletop zone. In this particular case, it's outlined with a yellow border around it. This allows us to do off-board movement, shall we say, flanking movements, things of that nature, and the element of surprise in the game. Once you enter the battlefield zone, the yellowed zone that is, the actual counters are transferred from the map and placed into the block movement system, which is covered in other videos. And the blocks themselves are moved actually on the tabletop, which eventually leads to the deployment of the actual miniatures onto the tabletop when they become within effective firing range, i.e. about two feet, or charge range and things of that nature. So there's always an element of surprise to the players on both sides as to what is actually coming at them and what is actually holding a position in front of them. That being said, let's cover the initial deployments of both the French and the Prussian armies. Starting with the French here on the lower edge of the map, you see I have a couple of counters off, off the edge of the map. Those will be arriving units. Zooming down here a little bit closer, you eventually will find yourself looking at Imperial Headquarters, a little tent-shaped thing. On the left is the 4th Cavalry Corps of the two Crossier Divisions, 13th and 14th. Off to the right is the Imperial Guard with the Imperial Guard Headquarters. The Guard Grenadiers, Guard Chasseurs, Young Guard, and the Guard Heavy Artillery and Guard Heavy Cavalry Divisions. Remember these markers represent roughly divisions. We utilize on this map a scale of 600 yards to the inch, so each hand-drawn square is a one-inch square. Each of these commands can represent anything from like 20 to 50 or 70 odd figures or miniatures on the actual tabletop as we use in this particular battle, a scale of 100 to 1 ratio. Off to the left, getting back on the commentary here, we have Van Damme's division of his four infantry divisions, 7th, 8th, 10th, and 11th, along with his headquarters, reflected, reflected by the flag, and the attached cavalry to the corps. Off to the far left, if they arrive in time, is the brigade of cavalry and an infantry division from Delon's 1st Corps, who spent the day, as we all know, marching back and forth. If they arrive, they'll enter someplace on this left edge of the map. Off the edge on the back here is the 6th Corps, who came up very late. People forgot to give it orders to march up. And we have the 19th, 20th, and 21st Infantry Divisions, along with the Corps Marker. They would have the ability to enter someplace on this back edge of the map here in this corner. Going up the road, we have Grouchet's Cavalry Wing, shall we say, of the 1st Cavalry Corps and the 3rd Cavalry Corps each consisting of two divisions of cavalry, 9th and 10th, and 3rd and 4th. Sorry, 4th and 5th cavalry. And we have Garrard's Infantry Corps, the 4th Corps, with its three infantry divisions and its attached cavalry. Bear in mind the 14th Infantry Division temporarily for this battle is attached to Grouchet's command as it was the only infantry available for him on this entire right flank. So that pretty much concludes the French deployment. Let's now look at the Prussian. Marshal Blücher, forward, Marshal forward, shall we say, is up on the hill, shown by the Imperial Prussian flag there. Underneath him is the 2nd Infantry Brigade. 1st Cavalry, First Cavalry Corps, Cavalry, is adjacent to him, along with the rest of the First Corps deployed in the villages. Note the use of the extension markers. The extension markers basically means that, that where the arrow is pointing at, that particular brigade or division in this case, is extended into additional squares. So markers on our map can actually be reflected of being in more than one square. You can extend it as far as you wish. Bear in mind you must put at least one unit, i.e. battalion, infantry, cavalry regiment, whatever, in each individual square that you extend into. Some brigades or divisions get fairly large, so it's recommended in the game to actually deploy into two squares for fitness and ability to maneuver. Otherwise, we have the rest of the 1st Corps here. The 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Brigades are strung along in the towns with the relevant extension markers. Prussian 2nd Corps strung up along the road here. Starting on the far left, they have a detachment of Assars looking down the road at, towards Quatre de Bras. Then they have this 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th Infantry brigades, along with the attached cavalry to the Corps, and the Corps headquarter markers, all strung along the road here. In our game, basically a counter can move one adjacent square, in most circumstances. 
either forward or diagonally. And that's per turn on the tabletop. Exactly the same turn sequencing as on the table. Where you move the miniatures for your turn, you can move the counter one square on the map. Roughly corresponds to the same movement rate as that's what's on the tabletop. Third Corps strung along the heights here. We have the 9th, 10th, and 11th Brigades, with the 12th just off the map. They could be called and brought in instantaneously. They are literally just off the map edge here, along with their attached cavalry on the far Prussian left in this case, or the French viewing point right. Again, note the extend markers, showing that these brigades are strung out along the stream edge. And that small command marker across the stream there, that represents one or two Prussian landward battalions, which were stationed in the, in the little villages across the stream there. We use the small command markers to represent individual units or something of that nature if they're deployed outside the normal parameters of the individual command or division. Last but least, of course, our maps all have legends. It makes it a little bit easier for people to see what's going on. And please refer to my static shots of this actual map for maybe better viewing, because vi video is not the best here. And also you can see what the terrain looks like without the counters on the map. This map, of course, is fully labeled. All the towns and rivers and streams and features are all labeled. And if you have any questions, please email the Wargamer Rabbit. I'll gladly explain this system to you. Please utilize our rules section. You can see how this system works. It's very efficient. It's very simple. It saves a lot of time in the rear areas of our battlefield. We just move blocks around instead of moving actual miniatures or miniature trays. Anyway, on to the actual miniature game and its results and commentary.